Welcome to Critical Hit, a major spoilers podcast. Thank you so much for downloading and checking us out this week. Kevin, what you got planned? Well, uh, before we get into what's coming up, I think we should review what happened last time. On Critical oh, Hit. Hit. I think we upgraded our characters. <laughs> yes. that, that is what we did. Um, so uh, we, we took a session and uh, you guys upgraded your characters. You leveled up. Um, and made a few changes uh, because uh, when we last saw the crew of the Squeaky Clean... On uh, Critical Hit! <laughs> they had, you guys had uh, flown from uh, an area I call Devouring Space next to the Blood Door, a yeah. uh, supermassive black hole um, surrounded by forces of the cult of the devourer, which is where rain, uh, felt, uh, it appropriate to hide, uh, her little hidden capsule, um, uh, by a dwarven beer icon, uh, floating in the middle of nowhere. Uh, it does seem, uh, unlikely that this was tampered with, uh, by <laughs> the forces of Abadar Corp. Uh, and uh, so you guys had gathered that after going on a epic drifting quest um, with uh, the the dwarves, uh, Brenson, Sirius, and Duthane, uh, and uh, as well as um, uh, Amsala and and her um, uh, colleague uh, Santanax. Uh, the Kasatha, and you guys had unfurled a chaos sail as an alternative method of getting out of Dodge uh, when uh, fleeing the Cult of the Devourer, and it took you where you needed to go, uh, which is back into packed world space, uh, you know, somewhere not too far from Absalom Station, uh, and uh, you are shiny and new, uh, having emerged slightly different than you were before. It, like, you have total continuity of memory and experience, but there are uh, little tweaks. Um, you know, uh, so Dungeon actually... Strength is now 27. <laughs> why don't we go around and uh, just say real quick uh, something that uh, changed about your character and it doesn't have to be, be something mechanical. In fact, I'd rather it wasn't uh, because that's boring. Let's just say like, oh, I look like this or I, you know, some other little thing that changed. Starting with Vangi. Uh, yeah, Vangi just seems to be a lot more um, confident and uh, like a little bit. She's. Uh, I even describe this, um, like just a, like, like she's actually like a little bit clumsier now, but, um, but seems to like still be making that up with for it by like moving around the ship. Like she knows the place a little bit better, um, and like tinkering around with things like tightening screws and getting it, you know, trying to repair all the, the damage, uh, while also like carrying around a data pad in her tail uh, and keeping track on like what the latest buzz is on drifters. Amu. Uh, Amu has got a few different new tinctures and whatnot uh, hanging off of their shell. Uh, basically more variety to what uh, they have available to throw to uh, allies as well as looking slightly more, uh, Solid, intact, like more le less less like uh, ready to fall apart when stretched out. <laughs> A little beefier, okay. Uh, stretch arms stronger. <laughs> uh, Bob. Bob uh, is sporting a scar right down his face across his eye, and he's got a monocle, so you know that he can see even better and pilot this ship even faster. Wait, and a monocle on the scarred eye or the other? Yes, a, a monocle on the scarred eye. Um, 
and then he uh he uh also has a really cool uh beard and mustache going now too and he just looks like he's in complete control of this ship and can take care of it top to bottom and if you mess with his ship he can shoot you from a distance with he still has the beret right he still does have the beret awesome it's like the evil bob from the mirror universe or you know he the, yeah, the are we the are we William Riker like a goatee clone. or like a full He's, beard? No, it's a full on William Riker Tim. What was his <laughs> what was his clone guy's name? Tim? Tom. Tom, Tom, Tom that's who it is. Yeah, Tom Riker. Uh great. So you've you've grown the beard. Yes. Now All his right. last name has been changed to Middleman. <laughs> uh Quentin. Uh it, Quentin doesn't look particularly different, but when he's moving about the ship, doing his usual floaty bits, you see like the shell moving around and the outer bits kind of opening and arms coming in and out. And if you look closely, the outer shell of his spheroid form looks like it's not quite as thick. Previously, it looked like, you know, kind of a, a layer of armored quadra titanium. And now it looks not quite translucent, but still kind of a little bit shiny, like it's almost made of some sort of transparent aluminum or something of that nature. So if you pay attention, he's a little bit sparkly at certain times. But he also looks like he can't quite take the same number of hits that he did because maybe this isn't quite as as tough of a shell. You're always sparkly in my mind, Quentin. Well, you know. Skritik. Skritik is a little bit taller. Just like an inch or two. <laughs> <laughs> did you did you have your legs broken <laughs> maybe he just uh, stands up no, a bit he, straighter. Just spi- he uh, spiked his hair up a little bit he's got like a faux hawk <laughs> yes. uh, um, I mean, for the most part the uh, skritic isn't uh a lot different uh other than maybe a fascination to some void angels but <laughs> He does uh, seem to uh, move about and have a bit more confidence and familiarity with various systems of the and controls of the ship. Awesome. Uh, and last but not least, team co-captain Hecubino. Uh, Hecubino, um, probably the, the main change with him is that he wears his power a lot more Obviously, now, um, sometimes when he's thinking about something or analyzing something, his like, uh, you know, iris and pupil will like fade away, so his eyes will just turn completely white. Um, also, you know, he now his eyebrows come up to a point at the end, I have like a little curly because you know that's what psychics have. It looks like it looks like a Vulcan. Yep. Um, Got kind of a little lightning bolt that looks like it just like right down the side of his temple, maybe. Yeah, something like that. Um, now, remind me, does Hecubino have a widow's peak? Uh, he's he bald. Is, he's bald, so he, oh, I, okay. I don't know that we know. I don't know that we've okay. established it, but I guess he probably would. Although I've always seen him as having like kind of like a loose afro when he, wore, when he grows his hair, so I don't know if, how a widow, widow's peak factors mm. in with that um, no yeah the main like honestly we don't have the uh we don't have the ram to run hecubino's hair simulation so we've just kept them bald this whole time yeah. <laughs> All right, bald. Bald by choice yeah uh lastly he is going to change his and and maybe we can describe this in more detail later but he's going to change his makeup um so that uh when he's getting ready to go instead of like painting on like the two like purple stars that Vangy has. He's going to paint one purple star at the center of his forehead and then basically draw a triangle to his other two eyes and fill all that in with black since there are heels now. Nice. Nice. Great. Yeah, you guys will have a full makeup scene, but not okay. just yet. Um but that is good to know. So uh you are you know in Pack World space, you're aboard the squeaky clean uh, you have, it seems like, just days uh, before uh, you're likely going to be called up uh, by Extreme Infosphere Productions uh, and, you know, Eon Souljet uh, to uh, go into 
uh, this season's final Drifters race and finale. So uh, you have Rain's capsule. You have a little bit of a beat up ship uh, at the moment. What do you do? Well, I'm going to start repairs on the ship. Well, we were going to head back to the uh, android oh, abolitionist yeah. front um, to because, uh, yeah, we were going to repair the ship there and I think that we're processing the the information we had gotten though. Mm-hmm. So see if they got anything on it. All right. Um, so you can make way. Oh, yeah. And Brenton, Sirius, and Duthane, and Amsala, and Santanax are here as well, uh, because they also emerged from the chaos portal sale uh, thing that you did. Uh, so you guys can make your way back to the diaspora and specifically back to Chainbreaker 1. Um, just cutting ahead to that briefly, when you do get signaled into Chainbreaker 1, it is now all but rote. Um, they're like, yeah, you know, like they, they right. scramble your signals and stuff like that. But you're pretty sure at this point, Bob, you could find the asteroid if you really tried. Oh, yeah. So. Um, and uh, so you guys will, uh, you know, be approaching that uh, soon if you want uh, that, you know, with the the illusory uh, asteroid where, um, you know, you can make a decent bit of repairs on your own, Bob. But uh if you want to do like good, it'll be faster and easier in port than it is just in space. I'll make any necessary repairs from any damage, uh, you know, immediate uh, critical damage that happened when we, uh, when we took damage inside the, uh, uh, whatever that zone was. Devouring yes. space. Yeah. The devouring Ooh. space. I keep thinking as a thought every time you say that. So it's like, <laughs> Uh, sure. So yeah, I'll do any of those kinds of things, but then we'll get a super hyper tune um, once we get back to uh, Chainbreaker One. Okay. And we did install the the sail thingy. Yeah. You did. Okay. So you still have that, though. You probably need to furl it back up at this point. It can still be. In, you can still use it again. It's just. <laughs> You know, you pro- you probably too much for it. Indeed. Well, we don't want to. We don't want that to to be there while we're navigating an asteroid field, right? And get little holes in it. I retract the sail. Actually, manual. It's on like one oh, of those okay. like like pulleys. Right? <laughs> <laughs> no, it is not one of those like double cranks. You know what I'm talking <laughs> about? One hand for the boat, one hand for yourself. I mean, cool. Uh, so we can uh, cut to Chainbreaker One if you guys want, well, or you can resolve stuff on board first. Yeah, I mean, why don't we Everybody go into here. like. Uh, the holographic amusement chamber and start spreading out the uh, the brain's capsule and see what's, what we got. So, uh, as I previously mentioned, it looks like a conspiracy board was shoved in here, taken down off the uh, wall and uh, unceremoniously tossed in. So there's a bunch of printed out articles. Um, it seems like rain, uh, you know, printing stuff out is relatively rare in this world and probably fairly expensive. Um, Cause why would you do that when you can just have everything as a hologram or on or your data pad? Uh, but rain clearly didn't trust that. Um, and you can see like from some of her uh, handwritten notes that uh, she believes she had good reason not to of uh, basically the, uh, the digital past being edited on files. So like, things that you know should have been accessible and uh, you know they got changed with no update and no means of uh, reverting it so she quickly started relying on hard copies uh, which is kind of antiquated and um, uh, retro we'll say uh, but you can you can put those up against the wall uh, and then you can use like the holographic amusement chamber to 
depict whatever you want, uh, or maybe just at the very least little holographic strings connecting the dots. Um, so as you start putting up uh, the information from the capsule, uh, it definitely seems like you know her her primary focus was the death of these uh, other drifters teams, um, and that goes back. You know, people have been dying in drifters. It's a it's a dangerous game for sure, um, and it, it it's got twenty seven seasons, and the, you know the, it's not. It, it originally kind of pitched itself as, um, you know, authentic and and uh, you know it's a deadly profession, but we're right there next to them, just watching them do it. Uh, but uh, there is definitely a point. Um, uh, about 12 years ago, uh, where it takes a turn, um, and uh, you can see that the uh, the coverage. Um, sometimes she had no choice but to include like video clips and stuff like that, um, and so you can play some of those, uh, which are a little tough to watch although so you may have seen some of the coverage uh, before from actually watching drifters uh, but there's definitely a marked tone shift where it becomes kind of like hockey with the fights where it's like oh yeah 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 no that's just part of the game that's part of the show mm. is the explosions that kill people how does that track against the data that we stole from um Extreme infosphere. Yeah. So uh, you're, you'll are you start like kind of putting everything up on the board and then you can start connecting the pieces with some of the extra information you guys have. Um, so uh, it looks like um, there have been uh, 15 teams that Rain identified as dying in particularly suspicious ways uh, over those 12 years. Um, so at this point, uh, why don't you guys ask me questions and see, because it's it's a little hard, you know, she she was clearly drawing inferences um, and she's got some, some pieces of information about all of them, but to connect the dots, you might need to, kind of ask the right questions and then see where the information takes you. So any questions you guys come up with, ask them and uh, we'll see what the information shows you. All right. I mean, so I, 15 over tw 15 sorry. over 12 years, right? So that's multiple deaths in a season. We've already seen the one death this season uh, when we accidentally blew up the other team. Yep. Um, is there any indication of what is a trigger to make somebody a target? Uh, to die, a uh, team, a target to die. Mm -hmm. Like, is uh, there any correlation in advertisers or backing? Yeah, or are they all like darlings in some degree? Um, yeah. So uh, there are um, there are a couple of themes um, there that you can. Those of you with like more of a kind of like a narrative bent might notice this first. Um, by going through it, uh, because you can even go through some of the promotional material that you have from Extreme Infosphere Productions. Because uh, you guys remember that you freaking broke in there, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. That's yep, why yep. I was, yeah, the, the stuff yep. that was like under super duper security. Yeah. So um, it seems like one of the themes is for some reason. I come up with the word ingenue. That's not what I mean, but um, uh, like the the plucky, naive do-gooders um, <laughs> who die. Oh, no, I'm a target. <laughs> the baby faces. The baby faces who die tragically to prove the situation serious. Um, that uh, that's one. Uh, another one is um like a a popular uh but not mainstream group like uh i'm trying to come up with like when they have a particularly um 
like motivated fan base, um, but are not uh, kind of mainstream popular, like the cult hit people. Those they sometimes let run a, a few seasons, but they never let them go on too long. And uh, then uh, there are a couple in the early seasons that are are a little bit more suspicious. Uh, It seems like maybe they were just getting their groove uh, on whatever they were doing. Um, But there definitely seemed to there seems to have been at least one kind of false start where they seem to like change their mind midway through the season and had to. Uh, basically write them off the show. They as in Extreme Infosphere or they as in the Drifters? Uh, Where Extreme Infosphere wrote a team, like it seemed like they were going to have a big arc um, and be at least, you know, the new hotness. And they were not just baby faces. They seemed to have like legitimate good guy arcs, kind of a little bit more, you know, they were doing more interviews, uh, getting good press coverage, um, being set up with powerful sponsors, those sorts of things. Um, and then uh, something happened and uh, they were quickly and suddenly written off the show mm. and died. <laughs> By written yeah. off the show, I mean killed on the show and then they had right. to clean up the narrative arcs afterwards. They, they ticked off Vince McMahon and they got written off. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Got them and killed. Yeah. Uh, so does that answer that question? Yeah. How, what's the, uh, can we tell, I guess, how do, like, at what point, uh, Eon Souljet becomes like more involved in drifters? So, um, Eon Souljet's name is not on a lot of this material. Uh, he seems fairly distant, uh, which you know, isn't true. Um, just from, from watching him, uh, but uh, he his his corporate uh, shell game foo is pretty strong. Um, without uh, using the uh, virus, the kind of sentient virus that uh, the Android Abolitionist Front made, and you guys installed in this stuff, it's unclear that you guys can kind of pierce his particular uh, veil of uh, secrecy, but uh, things do date back uh, basically 12 years. Uh, Um, Is there, um, can we determine if uh, drifters also becoming sort of superstars that go on to have, um, like other shows and sponsorships and stuff. It, it, does that also start around the same time? Well, so that actually started before it, um, but it became, it was it, like, that was more of the, the renegades. Essentially renegades was the first team that ever became superstars from drifters. And then uh, that, the, the model of turning it into a platform to launch people into superstardom deliberately, that started about 12 years ago, too. And and how does the, um, I guess, viewership and profits seem to uh, increase once that happens? Oh, it's a successful strategy. Um, it seems like it was, you know, a... a it, it was doing okay, it's totally fine, but probably a little niche for uh, a lot of people's tastes. Um, uh, for you know, over a decade, um, but then uh, it pivoted. Um, if I were to compare it, uh, you know, the first three, three, first three or four um, Fast and the Furious movies were about cars, and then right. they stopped being about cars. At one point, Drifter stops being about cars, and it becomes just a mega franchise tentpole. Hmm. And again, that's 12 years ago. And it becomes, it's not like overnight, but a, clearly a new corporate strategy was put in place, and it's quite successful. Can we check uh, 
if either how many of these teams or if these or like you know maybe among all teams if we have that information or could find that information basically how many of these teams have a quentin or proto quentin along for for recording mm. no one's like quentin <laughs> uh <laughs> Uh, yeah, they they definitely seem to have started. Um, you you suspect, and this comes directly out of Rain's notes because she she has been hunting people down. Um, like, uh, for instance, Warp was on her uh, her uh, that is to say, um, I think her name was Zem, uh, Zem the Witch Warper. Mm-hmm. Uh, she was uh on uh rain's question mark list um so it's not necessarily that they're always an android you know whose job is to be the the social media liaison uh and camera person um but uh they're she is definitely dubious of several members of affected teams where it's like the, you know bodies weren't were never recovered or like she's found she's hired people to like look into them and found she thinks that they're hiding out uh in a planet in the Vescarium empire stuff like that um so it's certainly not unique to have a, a traitor with the uh, popularity of drifters surely there had to be some competition uh, to do the same thing so was there what what did uh, is there any conspiracy that we can see about uh, Drifters Federation or Drifters Raw or anything like that? Yeah, copycats. Um, yeah. yeah. So um, that is covered in detail in the corporate information you've stolen, um, and uh, there are. It, it seems like they they pursued an aggressive uh, corporate strategy of uh, buying things out. Um, and then there are a number of loose um, – how, how do I want to put this? The amount of data present is woefully inadequate for the, the, what is typical in these write-ups. You know, these, are, mm. these are people who love them, their TPS reports. Uh, but then there are sometimes some uh, inquiries where like, and then they stop being this – program stop being a competitor and everything's fine um Hmm. so uh rain didn't have access to that information so you don't know what's up with it but you could certainly do research that on your own just using the infosphere oh that sounds like a job for quentin i'll do that all right uh so the information is um these people were murdered uh just straight up assassinated Um, and you've actually come across, uh, some, this is interesting. There were some case files where, um, oh, Hey, this does link back into the corporate files, just not in a way you were expecting. It looks like there was an internal audit performed, uh, by an inquisitor of Abadar into, uh, you know, one of these deaths. And then, uh, that inquisitor of Abadar also went missing. Jeez covering their tracks weird it shows that he drowned on the desert planet <laughs> nope. just fell there out a window fell out of his parachute on when he jumped out of that plane. space yep that's very odd generally when you fall out a window you go down um now that you see that quentin uh you an idea pops into your head uh to analyze the corporate data using a slightly different dimension um, mm-hmm. and you punch it in. Oh boy. Yeah. When you, when you slice the data like that, you can see, um, that like you, you start looking into hirings and firings and correlating those with disappearances. And, uh, there is an internal, uh, corporate battlefield, uh, in hidden in these records of, um, the the controlling interest of extreme infosphere productions it with you know going back into abadar corp and uh basically um you can tell that there were at least two sides um 
in terms of the the path of control here and uh who the people who are now in control which you are confident are all uh eon soljet uh lackeys and and puppets um all of those people like you you can see like there's been a systematic effort to uh put his people in places of control not just it for drifters or extreme infosphere productions but in a lot of like these key marketing social media uh everything having to do with the infosphere um kind of messaging level positions within uh the church of abadar slash abadar corp itself um and while there's there's nothing as cut and dry as the murders that rain is investigating you do mm-hmm. uncover several other fairly suspicious cases of you know this notable uh preacher who uh you know she was um pitching a very different kind of uh abadar worship um and you know she, her mission got and she was like you know decrying abadar the the tendency of some within the church to focus on uh greed as opposed to societal good and wouldn't you know it like her planet got hit by a stray um uh you know raider raid yeah stray meteor stray uh uh alien raid and everyone died um and it's like was that um an assassination y- you know officially no but it does seem like Ian soljet's enemies have a tendency to either get bought out retire and get out of the game or die Fun. sometimes in that order hmm. um can we sign basically any so, like, the way, um, what's her name, Zem, um, died was pretty spectacular. Um, can we find any, like, kind of reports um, of, like, other, basically, like, infernal implosions? Uh, yes, you can. It's happened only, like, two other times that you can find, but it has happened before. Hey, one of those lines up very neatly with the previous team that, uh, um, got written off. Oh. I want to broke a deal. Hmm. That seems like a reasonable inference. Cool. Yes. Huh? How long has Team Electrum been been on its winning streak? Uh Team Electrum uh has been on its winning streak for eight years. Ah. Interesting. Who was the uh the winner the year before them? I don't know. Yeah, if it doesn't uh, matter, I don't have not. a good I'm just name. curious if they like you know what what their deal was even like why like because clearly some strategy changed within within the span of kind of soldier supremacy that those guys took over again it looks like maybe the first they're, they're now that you see it uh you can actually see um that some of the arcs that were written for that first team team electrum actually goes through it in there uh, but they yeah. go through them a little changed a little better um and yeah, it's they, like um maybe the first reboot. yeah maybe the first few uh times maybe the first few seasons after the changeover they were trying to have different teams win mm-hmm. um and finally they were like you know if we just have a team that always wins then that we only have to focus on that team like we don't have to do all these rewrites for uh, you know just because we want some other team to win up until they piss Especially us off anyway. if they're a proven team player. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Cool. Um, how do the sponsors change over time? I mean, as it gets bigger, more sponsorship money keeps getting uh, poured in. Uh, obviously 12 years is a long time. So uh, the whole, like there are products that, uh, are pitched now that didn't even exist back then yeah, but um how many of uh, those how many of those new sponsors are owned by yeah ian Souljet or one of his subsidiaries oh or i think th- i think we got a money laundering scheme going on Ooh. oh absolutely um there there 
it's it's funny it you know you'd think like why is all this even necessary but it seems like whoever designed this uh kind of couldn't help themselves um in that like you know it's maybe penny wise pound foolish that kind of thing except we're dealing in you know hundreds of millions of credits where it's like yep and you're absolutely right there are a bunch of basically again if you run that faction analysis that quentin was doing it seems like a lot of uh the soul jet faction uh companies uh kind of pumped this brand full of money uh to begin with um and have maintained like it's a it's a weird uh symbiosis where those brands pump money into this uh show which kind of it, you know it can use all that money to uh pump its ratings um and then they do favors for all those brands um you mentioned that uh rain thought that the kind of record was being tampered with um does she have any like specific notes that we can effectively cross reference um with uh the records we stole to see like the edited versions uh yeah yep um so again it's it's a lot of like cleaning up the past slash rewriting history um you know she's got a ri- tapes that are like the original airings, not literal tapes, but recordings that aren't connected to the infosphere of like the original airings. And then there have been edits subsequently, mm-hmm. um, you know, the soul live... cut. yeah, the soul jet cut. Uh, then, uh, you know, there were live interviews that you've seen multiple versions of, which also proves the interviewers are in on it. Um, uh, there's, um, you know, it, just a, a variety of kind of continuity maintenance edits have been made. So is this I looking mean, more like money just... laundering or pyramid scheme or bump and dump or what? what is the... Yes. What are we seeing in all of this? So it seems like drifters would make money if it were run honestly, uh, interestingly enough. Um it doesn't seem to necessarily be scamming its viewers except for all the scam products they promote. Um, that is kind of a scam. Uh, and you know, murdering its participants. That's not sure, other than either. the scamming. It's not really scammy. Um, but, but in terms of how they make money, like where's, where, where's, if you follow the money, this thing is a money making machine. It, it, it's used to create celebrities it's used to, um, you know, funnel uh, and kind of legitimize. Think of it as, um, have you ever heard the term sports washing? Mm, great. Um, uh, <laughs> I mean, we uh, all here have, Kevin, but I'm sure some of our listeners have no idea what you're yeah. talking about. Ex- so. Explain it for explain them, those to, to them. in the yeah. audience. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so is a tendency... Uh, for instance, with, let's say, the Saudi Live Tour, uh, uh, for those with uh, a lot of money uh, to um, kind of burnish their reputation by engage, like, you know, hosting uh, the World Cup or um, the Winter or Olympics. Like that. Yep. Right. So it's, it's, a, it's using money uh, as a political tool to um legitimize yourself and it's like if you're if you're so big jewel if you if it you know if you have an ad uh uh for the super bowl well then it must be legit (laughs) right matt damon (laughs) right but a lie to us so it's like that but you know gal galactic scale um, so those people definitely get something out of it, and Drifters gets a ton of money. Um, how does that funk like factor into the murders? It's not clear that it does. The murders just seem to be kind of engineering the the narrative arcs that Drifters is supposed to go through. So there's no indication then that any of these previous teams, besides the, uh, any of these previous teams, were clued in to what was going on and they were taken out because they knew too much. 
Uh, there is this one team uh, that I should actually give you their name. Um, team Lizard Brain? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, I mean, obviously, we're there now. Yeah. The, it, what would be funny is if we find like a, a picture of this team, and it's a picture <laughs> of all of them looking down at a photograph of another team. <laughs> <laughs> it, like rain in the background. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we do know that we're not the or first look like team us. that she's They've got an Android the pilot. They've got a yeah. sphere. Uh, uh, everything, everything's person. rotated clockwise once, right. which so is they've great. They've got a to... telepathic vesk, and then they've yeah. got a super strong hamster. Yep. And they're, they're it's, a it's really weird creature. because their skritic is Amu. <laughs> right. But, like but it's this, okay like, because they're Amu. Like a venomous co- uh, coral monster. So I've got a few team names here. Team redundant team name, but that was just last year. And they were a uh, rookie team that blew up. Mm-hmm. There's team We Love Spiders. Uh, there's team Lunarcana. Uh, those are all dead. Um, so Lunarcana, yeah, sure. We'll say that um, that, that was the team uh, from, uh, let's see here, 11 like nine years, years ago. ago. 11 years ago? Okay. Yeah. And they... we or 10 we're... years ago, something like that, yeah. We're starting to see that maybe they started unraveling things. Yeah, it seemed, you know, it, it, you don't have evidence that they specifically were made an offer, but um, it definitely seemed like they were being pumped to become uh, major celebrities um, and were everywhere. And then they died super suspiciously mm. um, and uh, kind of suddenly. Um, and uh, this was immediately after one of their members um, uh, died in a um, uh, uh, it, it, it's recorded officially as like an illegal arms deal gone wrong. But that is just not what happened. Uh, digging into the, the video footage and stuff like that, it is very similar to what happened with uh, Zem the Witch Warper, uh, where like everybody died due to uh, infernal activity, uh, like very suddenly, very gruesomely, um, and uh, it doesn't line up with the story. That that's actually another thing where they have edited the official records, um, but uh, Rain's hard copies uh, help you out. Interesting. So, um, what kind the of whole team got on their motorcycles and rode away into the night on uh, Team Electrum? Mm. Yeah, she's been following them a long time. Um, she believes that they like it's clear from from her notes and evidence that they are um, complicit and aware of what is happening, at least to some extent. Um, and uh, she considers them like the ultimate sellouts. Um, but dangerous for sure. She has uh, dossiers on, on every single member. Interesting. So is it like a Batman dossier of how to kill them the easiest? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, um, if it is, I'm going to memorize that. Uh, you can definitely call upon this dossier for some sort of strategic advantage in uh, dealings with them. Um, if you are curious about uh any, if you have any questions about the crew, um, which I can remind you of who all is on Team Electrum if you want, uh, the dossier might have answers. I mean, does she think that all there right. are... Why should them? remind us, for those of us who know, oh, I was... but you know, the listeners at home and might be... Win Weasel is obviously the best because he's the, both the leader and his name is Win Weasel. Yeah, yeah. Win Weasel, the uplifted weasel mechanic ex-con, the brick, I have Vesk a uh, Vanguard bounty hunter, a uh, steward Walker, a Lashunta soldier, ex undercover steward, Maite, a human female technomancer recovering from amnesia, Cryptex, an android operative assassin, and Augustus Slash, the human icon envoy. Amnesia. Yeah, it was all, we, we already figured out that that was just a scam. Was so there at all that's familiar? A, that's just a that's just an arc <laughs> okay. storyline. Is there anything in the dossiers that indicate um, 
who Extreme Info Sphere or Ian Souljet is having the most difficulty with, like who's their weakest yeah, that's, point that's or somebody question. that is disgruntled about uh, about the whole situation? Uh, the brick. Hmm. Um, oh, right, because he hates brick, it, Win Weasel. Yeah, the brick and Win Weasel don't get along. Hmm. The brick is was like a powerful vanguard, um, supposedly from the Vescarium Diplomatic Corps, which is uh, our state-sponsored bounty hunters. Um, the brick is like notable in bounty hunter circles and has basically uh, their own celebrity. So he doesn't need he doesn't need Team Electrum the way everybody mm. else does. Um, but Win Weasel is the boss of Team Electrum, and that doesn't sit well. Um, so the two of them have clashed repeatedly. Is his full name something like Duvid the Brick Jemison? <laughs> does he have like really, really striking eyebrows? I mean, he just sounds. He he's sounds a best. Like a, he's I don't know that that's so much eyebrows. eyebrows, but maybe like very striking. Eye scales. Yeah, exactly. Eye ridges. Yeah, there you mm. go. Maybe he's just really bad at basketball. <laughs> I think they named him the brick because they are not very creative. That hurts. <laughs> wow. Uh, another question might be, there are no doubt a number of conspiracy theory outlets, venues, orbit to orbit AM uh, type shows uh, that are out there. If any of this information that we have were presented would people just blow it off as another conspiracy theory or is there stuff in here that is so damning that people could not ignore it? Um, so the difference between what you guys have and what uh, a, any old conspiracy, like some of what this stuff had. might've even been on conspiracy channels before, but you have actual evidence. Um, like you have internal communiques and stuff like that. Uh, you what you don't have is the final like smoking gun that says, and the person behind this all who knew it the whole time was the unsoldier. Um, don't we though? Well, we haven't parked on. our we haven't parked at uh, um at the chain breaker one yet. So well, we, we have know. that, we have that video. That's true. true. That's true. That's, that's totally fair. It doesn't connect it directly to drifters. It connects it to a hostile takeover with other financial improprieties, uh, within the church of Abadar though. But again, perhaps once we, uh, get through the chain breaker one, uh, data from our, our new, uh, AI friend. Uh, some so, of this is already out there. You said, like well, be on I mean, the like info Star Wars kind of crazy crazy talk, or yeah, could somebody yeah, actually? That's why I said it? like orbit to orbit AM is probably more. Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah I like orbit to orbit AM a lot more. Let's not talk about the other one. Uh, well, orbit yeah. to orbit AM. That was that was good stuff. You ever listen to that? Right. Go yeah, on. Man. I did. Oh, heck yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, the bottom line is, uh, if you were to just dump this all uh, on the infosphere and like put it where you know the media would find it it would get coverage for sure um but without without somebody helping it along without without uh, you know you can tell from the corporate files you have and uh just quentin you know this because you you know it might have been your job for a period of time there are people who will clean this up it's a mess and it won't be fun for them, but there are people who will get like shut those sites down, get the 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 right people to denounce it. Uh, they will run a smear campaign against anyone, you know, uh, promoting it, and they'll buy out people, that sort of thing. Uh, so there there is there there are powerful interests who will try to shut this down. So on its own. This would, you know, it's hard to guess exactly what would happen, but this would be a certainly a huge kind of at least hard to 
you know, you have at least enough information here for it to be a persistent conspiracy people, a conspiracy theory that people don't drop right away. Um, yeah. But you can also predict that there would be a lot of pushback. We Beyond, can't like, uh, get it to Mr. Universe and broadcast it and bring I, down. I, I, I know Matthew well, I made I was... that exact point earlier tonight when I was talking to strategy <laughs> to Kevin. Is that I don't uh, even I hate that movie, but we really do need a don't can't stop the signal strategy. Well, I, I'm afraid that it's going to end up with Hecubino screaming out of a, a police cruiser hack the planet. Uh, you know. <laughs> but the question would be then. Who is Ian Soljet's most powerful enemy? Ooh, that is an interesting question. True. (laughs) And he might have already killed them all, so. Yeah, yeah. Nobility. I'm going to be so sad if it turns out it's us. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, so it probably. Yeah, so it's one of those weird things where his his enemies are are probably people you can't see. Mm. Like. You know, would you have guessed that, would you have guessed that rain a fairly, you know, a a not, not unreasonable description of which could have been a washed up ex drifter, Mm -hmm. um, uh, would be one of his more significant enemies because she was, Mm -hmm. um, you guys are certainly on that list, given the information you now have, he would certainly kill everyone on the ship if he you, you're pretty confident that he doesn't know that you know everything you do or you'd already, already dead. be dead. Yeah, I'm just thinking that if we release this information, it would, you know, the source of where this information comes from is just as important as the information itself. And so if it's coming from somebody that's super powerful, another god, another, you know, corporation or something, that can bring this out, then people are going to be more apt to believe that than the Android abolition or, front. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Or the Android abolition front. I mean, even they can be easily dismissed. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, or, or even coming from us, it, it's going to be easily dismissed. So I was just thinking who's the, who is actively uh, fighting, uh, you know, so, Ian Soltan, um, his, his, his corporate fronts. There, there's a number of ideas that you could, well, I have ideas, uh, but before I put them in your uh, brains, why don't you just ask, you ask that question to the group, Bob, and um, does anybody have any thoughts as to who would be Ian Soljet's enemies based off of what you currently know? I mean, and if there are, like, uh, again, he's killed most of the people in Avatar Corp already. Um, right. So I think le- legitimate uh, devotees of of avatar corp yeah. that was going to be what i was going to say too so that's an excellent yeah. thread which is he hasn't you can't just the the organization's too big and you know killing thousands of people would cause noteworthy upheaval um he has killed you know tens of people sure. uh which just is enough the right people at the right mm-hmm. time but what he's probably done is made a lot of uh, people who were, you know, like, like, let's say uh, that the, some of those board members he killed, um, you know, you can dig into their stories and find out it's like, oh, this person was the mentor of 12 mid ranking, uh, you know, lieutenants within the Church of Abadar. They've all been like reassigned and like none of them will probably get promoted anytime soon. And if any given one of them uh, acts up, Ian Soljet will probably have them, you know, to made, you know, assistant to the assistant janitor at some <laughs> prison, some planet somewhere. Um, but uh, he definitely has enemies within the church of Abadar. You're quite confident of that based off of your faction analysis. Clinton. So are there any other um, business types on his level? Um, like, you know, yeah, like some of these other rivals that he had like assassinated, yeah. like who again? Like a, a, like a no lay scum kind of guy who wants to, I don't know, send cars into space or something. <laughs> who has, you know, what? I thought we were anagramming. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Kevin, I was saying in universe that they were not that you weren't creative because you 
<laughs> you are clearly creative. Please don't kill me. <laughs> I mean, I, uh, d- uh, yeah, but nonetheless. No, um, yeah, there, this is, uh, something you're familiar with, Quentin, again. Um, there are other very powerful, um, corporations that are, uh, would love to see, Abadar Corp get a black eye. Just the bad press of it alone would be great for them. Um, but uh, let's see here. Some noteworthy ones. Sometimes these are, by the way, not all good groups on their, uh, in sure. their own. So, uh, so but... Fahey, who uh, <laughs> runs that. Uh, what? So the Aspis Consortium. Oh, sure. Um, <laughs> they're. they're uh, there's also a group called the Tetrad, which is a witch weird uh, trade association. Oh, hey, maybe um, we could go that. talk back to uh, what's his name? Uh, he was cool. Weird. So the, the witch weird who ran the market. Oh, God, what was his name? Uh, yes. Um, uh, Whose name? Baracus. Yeah. Uh, Bar- Bar- yes. Bar- Bar- Baracus. Bar- 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 yes, him. We like him. Baracus. Bar- uh, yeah. That's totally possible. Um, you know, the the Aspis Consortium doesn't have a good reputation, but they would prob if there was a a credit or two in it, they'd probably stab uh, Avatar Corp in the back. Any chance we can get all these people uh, to team up and San- work together? Sandoval Space Flight Systems is a uh, starship manufacturing and aerospace company that. Um, competes directly with Abadar Corp uh you know in in the realms that they uh participate in um and they don't seem unreasonable like they're they're as good or bad as other corporations <laughs> in this world as opposed to one you know is corrupt uh, to the core yeah so i got a um i guess sort of a setting question it, it, like, is there like a, a a law high enough to actually like put Ian Soljet away as like basically the head of a major church of a god that actually exists in universe? Um, it would so it it would be a he has broken many laws, but. Uh, his influence is so high that it would be challenging to prosecute him. Um, but the that that's going to stay true forever unless his influence gets undermined. Right. Um, you know the it's it's not impossible to to prosecute uh, religious figures, but you know it does take someone it. it you know, he will have a legion of fans uh, of his, you know, weekly program mm-hmm. uh, who will have his back. So it's going to take people who are, are, you know, disciplined and motivated and, uh, and pretty courageous to c- try to prosecute him. Okay. Yeah, so but if we, we take can... away his power, though, right, if we can diminishes power that that weakens him overall how do you mean power well if we just like influence put a black eye on his tarnish reputation, reputation. Yeah. i mean he clearly yeah. he clearly has some sort of some sort of i don't know deific energy I, I i can't imagine our efforts and maybe it's just me but like being more than an opening salvo oh yeah absolutely right it's like if we get this information to everyone that eon soljet hates yeah and who hates him back. Like we literally get this to every member of the church that we've identified as, as hating him. And we send it to Aspis and we send it to the Tetrad and we send it to, um, you know, everybody, like, just like pirate any... radio stations. I mean, yep. the families of the people he's, yeah, murdered. I mean that, yeah, sure. exactly. I mean, there's a lot of people who will yep. be understandably upset about this. Like people who bet on these races that were totally rigged. Like a lot of the time when, when you get like whistleblowers in, in the real world, they end up contacting like every newspaper mm-hmm. 
Yeah. So that if one newspaper is under there, yeah. Sam makes a good point, though, because I think the way to get this talked about is to get Drifters fans involved, to get the fans to, you know, start being absolutely horrified at the idea that someone has corrupted their beloved Drifters. We we can turn um, it into an RNG. Wait, no, what's it right. called? ARG? Yeah. An ARG. We could turn it Actually, into like a... Actually, that's fairly clever. Now that you think about it, you could be like, there's going to be an announcement and like have it on like... So there's... Uh, oh. this. This this plays into some things you're familiar with, Quentin, um, mm-hmm. where it's like, well, in theory, you know, like, yeah, strategically, you kind of want to release the information everywhere all at once at the same time. And you want the biggest uh, microphone you could possibly have to do it, um, because that's going to make if you released it to like one place, it'll be shut down and you'll have given away your element of surprise. And you'll so you'll have given basically all the the abadar uh you know infosphere spider people who work for eon Souljet, uh plenty of time to um to get their ducks in a row and get their message upright and start paying people off so you want to announce it all at once but you know that for things to go like you're basically an expert at how to make things go viral and uh despite those bad roles in the first race <laughs> um and some amount of like pre-game work like some like laying of a foundation is actually important where it's like you start a whisper campaign that's kind of like what is the matrix where it's like people don't even know what you're going to talk about yet did we and i i ask this knowing that i should know this so please forgive me did we feel when we saw him interacting with the giant being in the sky who looked sickly in horror. Do we feel like, like, uh, I, I, again, I'm not entirely sure how the God wheel works in this particular realm. Do we feel like Avadar is complicit in this or is soul jet somehow? He does not like, seem complicit. He seems co-op. that, that uh, on soul jet has taken him for a ride. Is there any possible way to, if not engage Abadar himself, to maybe engage his enemies if it feels like he's in on it, or maybe allies, you know? It's like, hey, who does he hang out with? Uh, I don't know. Uh, Ted. <laughs> Ted, the uh, god of hairspray, or Taldor. I don't know. Sure. Okay. So l- let me let me answer that by providing some just kind of basic information about the setting. Okay. Um, and then you can draw your own inferences from that. Um, sure. My opinion about the setting is that gods themselves are relatively distant. Um, they occasionally work kind of great miracles, um, and those are known. For instance, uh, the god Triune, um, the god of like artificial intelligence, uh, released the schematics for how to make drift drives. And everyone was like, oh my goodness, this changes everything. Um, but like, that's how a God communicates is, is something like that. Uh, and that's rare, very rare. Um, in general, if a God wants to take action kind of quote unquote directly in the world, it's done through their followers. So um, just as Soul Jet has done, essentially. Well, you know, th- let's say Hecubino, uh, you could make a, a mysticism check that would tell you that that could go. You're not sure the directionality of mm-hmm. it, right? Because you, there's nothing. All you see is someone working. All you see in this real world is the followers of a God doing what they're doing. Um, does that mean that they're influencing their God? Does it mean their God is influencing them? That's a, that's a question for you guys slash right. theologists. Whatever. Chicken egg. Can Abadar make a gold piece so big that he himself cannot lift it? But I will say the idea of like going to another God and being like, Hey God, what's up? That's not something people can typically do. Okay, mm-hmm. so it's, there's not like a channel for that. 
you could go talk to the the faithful of other religions and say, yeah, but that's, hey, this that's, religion's really messed up. Right. That's like the long game. That's like if we're planning on living in this. And I I only mention this in the spirit of balance, but have we considered how we feel about just taking his offer and, and living happy, rich lives? Absolutely not. Also, he has already made it clear that he will sell out whoever takes the deal for whoever the next shiny toy is next time they, you know, look shiny. Yep. We got to... We got to talk about it and get some votes in, but it seems pretty, uh, seems pretty bad to me. Um, you know, I, uh, I just, I don't, I don't want to live in the gilded cage. Mm -hmm. I agree with Vengi's assessment that we can't trust someone who betrayed everyone to get where he is, especially our level to his level. Yeah, this is sense. this is the last time we're ever going to have the jump on him. Yeah. Uh, if we start working for him, we probably will never have that again. I still think we need to gather this information and we need to hand deliver copies to everybody that we've been talking about. The opposing corporations, the the uh, Android ab- abolitionist front, the you know, the people that he's murdered, their families, the uh, people that have been screwed over in the corporations, just delivered, are, hand delivered all too, to all of them. We don't have enough hands for that. <laughs> there are too many we have people. The, we have the Android abolitionist front that can definitely do the footwork while we're busy causing a distraction. Well, let's Speaking of, let's talk to the Android abolitionist front and see what we got from the bug we planted and if there's anything more useful there. Sure. I feel all, like that will tip our hand. Yeah. Now, three people can keep a secret only when two of them are dead. The more we'll just people know what we know, signal. tell them to wait for the signal. We can also put drops out um, to have that uh, go out when it, you know, at a timed moment. Yeah. What we have yeah. is the element of surprise. We can get this information to everyone that needs to get it and we can put it on a timer and hopefully yeah at the very least i think we need some kind of dead man switch yeah Agreed. Uh, you know or it, it goes off you know close to the middle of the race no matter what mm-hmm. i i think so that i think we need to do it as part of the race um i think we almost we need to keep it as close to the vest as possible i also want to talk to uh um, what's his name? Uh, family, the family, the telepathic. Yeah, family. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Talos. Talos, yeah. Because yeah, his parents seem pretty yeah. good at uh, getting places that they shouldn't in terms of um, information, and they'll probably be pretty concerned about the fact that there's a you know guy who totally would kill his their kid. Yeah, I, I, I'm all for getting them the information along with everybody else, but I, it all has to be simultaneous. If we tip our yeah. hand to anybody, like they are, like their main concern actually seems to be Talos. So if they think that they can create an advantage for him by ratting on us, then that's that's where we end up. Fair enough. Like I think we can trust the Android Abolitionist Front. Obviously, Amsala and her crew. But outside of that, I don't see anybody really going to bat for us unless it becomes such a like clear, obvious uh, thing that everybody already knows, and that's why we have to like uh, diffuse this. Not basically. First off, we have to uh, encapsulate it in a way that's not going to be terribly confusing or open to interpretation. And then we are we have to send it out to everyone. And yes, the Android Abolitionist Front is probably uh, the best ones to to get into people's computers without them realizing. Um, but uh, but yeah, this has to be done. This has to be timed, and definitely doing it during the race would be the best time to do it because. 
Um, this is going to get a lot of publicity if we die and probably <laughs> still very much publicity if we don't. Yeah. I, uh, I would, uh, Tell Quint that he needs to start working on his uh, Why So Serious uh, viral marketing campaign that leads all of the Drifters fans to the information. And then we also need to make sure that, uh, you know, copies are hand delivered, not through the not through the info infosphere, because that'll tip everybody off that everything is hand delivered. And I agree with um, Skritik that it needs to that the timer needs to be released at the same time so that everything triggers all at once. Yes, but Bob, we don't have enough people to hand deliver all of these things. <laughs> we have the Android abolitionist front. Still not enough people. It needs to go through the infosphere. Yeah, that's still not enough people. And they're like, they don't have enough ships to go to every planet and space station that we'd need to cover with this. It has to go over the infosphere. It just has to happen simultaneously so that when they go back and try to race it, people will have copies already. Yeah, 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 yeah. You could um, kind of split the difference on that and give some of uh, of Ian Soljet's most powerful enemies hard right. copies uh, that are backups. That's like, oh, you you did something totally bizarre and purged the infosphere of like data from the last fifteen minutes. Nope, not good enough. Mm. Um, right. But you don't you like turning that over to a random mom and pop. Probably not that useful. No, 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 no. You know, turning it over to like another major corporation that hosts their own powerful servers um, or, you know, some insiders within the Church of Abadar or possibly even Talos's parents, like a small number of people having uh, physical backups. Not a bad idea. Yeah. And then um, we tip everybody off to a uh, info portal that has the information and Quentin gets everybody uh, revved up during the game to go and follow it uh, through a bunch of social media links and, and challenges. And then at the time when we need to release it, everybody hits that hits that at the same time, all the fans see the information, all the, uh, you know, hard copy backups are in the corporate hands where they need to be. And I think we're in the clear. The only thing that we need to make sure is that either a, we're winning the race and we become untouchable or B we need to strike a deal that says, uh, you don't kill us. And, and, uh, and, and that's it. I, I, I think that we have to go with option one. We I don't think touchable. I don't think winning the race will make us untouchable. Yeah, I think mostly no, I we think need to just get the message out target. and try to survive. And hopefully, uh, when we get the message out, Team Electrum realizes that they've been sold out and they don't uh, kill us first. Can somebody talk to Brick? Is there a way to get to Brick? I mean, we can probably talk to him during the race. There probably is a way to talk to him. But I don't know that we want have to do I it been... until it's too late. Yeah. Have I have we been inside the Team Electrum's ship? No, not inside of the ship, but we did hang out with them at that after party. Yeah, like a club. Yeah. Literally. Just so you know, um Brick is also a veteran of Directive Nine, a Vascarium uh spy network. Oh cool. Um and uh they're they're typically fiercely loyal to the empire and then uh, also a reminder about brick has um ritual tattoos to demoratosh the conqueror a grim deity who teaches war and conquest are pillars of the universe and everyone has a duty to propel one's community to victory oh good dude so i mean you still feel free to communicate with him but that gives you uh, a little bit more information about, um, you know, he's a worshiper of the Grim Commander. <laughs> I mean, yeah, definitely, uh, definitely someone you want, I guess, at, during the thick of things, somebody you want on your side and somebody that you want to plausibly deny afterwards. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, Team Electrum can be one of the groups that we get this information to definitely and we probably could do it over short range I, I, during yeah, the race yeah. and it would be hard to intercept for that. them to block us that way yeah yeah i like that um and you know it, it, it's it's just as likely that they'll get that that this will like that they'll double down um but but at least it puts it 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 casts a question about their their boss and what they're doing and 
once you start I think once you start betraying people, you start getting also more paranoid that you're going to be betrayed. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that's a thing. Um, What else? Do we go talk to the androids? Yeah, let's do that. Unless you want to talk to Telos' parents first. I think we're going to wait and talk to them until we're pulling the trigger on everyone. Yeah. All right. Docking docking port engaged. Uh, Well, you get a, a welcome back. Um, from uh, 203, a.k.a. Zoe. Uh, she um, likes what you did with your... Did you grow that? Like, Oh, really? This? this? Yeah. And Bob just peels it off. It was like just glued on <laughs> with like spirit gum. <laughs> and then he gets a rag out and he wipes the scar off his, off his eye. Uh, uh, did you like that or no? I was trying something new. You know, I think maybe the monocle put it a little over the top, but, oh, okay. I, but you know, pick one or two, um, not the monocle though, uh, no. I'm, I'm anti, I'm anti monocle, but I like the scar, uh, or the facial hair, but the scar has got to be earned, right? Like it's yeah. cool if you have like an actual scar over your eye, just like well, you had it. Depending on how so, things turn out. I mean, I might end up with more than one scar. Right, but hopefully it looks cool. Is what I'm <laughs> I saying. hope so too. She uh, punches you in the shoulder. <laughs> Ow! Hey, uh, what'd you do to the to to our ship? Oh, we uh, put a sail on to make it go zoom. Right, and you uh, evidently use that as like what target practice for all the the bad guys to to shoot well, you. Yeah, somebody did. It was uh, it was quite the trip. Okay. You heard of Deep Angels? Well, They're incredible. Oh yes. Maybe. Oh, um, I heard that was just like a like a urban legend. It definitely oh, is not. No, no. <laughs> they are very real. I guess I mean galactic deep space legend, but you know. Yeah. Oh, well. they're cryptids. Hmm. How cryptic. Did they help you? I mean, yeah. Well, good. I'm glad you made some friends. I turn and look at Skritic. They open our minds to all sorts of new ways. <laughs> Bangy nods. Okay, well, that's just creepy. Um, So, uh, what's the plan? We need to repair your ship. Yes. We would appreciate first. that. And then we need to find out the information that you've gotten from the, um, from our little bug. Yes. So, uh, it's a little tricky how, uh, how this has worked. Um, basically, uh, communication has to be kept at an absolute minimum because that's how it can be discovered. Um, so we're getting more like, um, well, are, are any of you programmers? It's kind of like getting the headers, which is enough to like compile against, but not the actual code. Uh, it's we're getting we're getting summaries of files. Not and when I say summaries, I don't mean like the way a person would summarize them. I mean like their file names, um, or like the file architecture, things like that. Uh, I can say i think we have personal finances which is great that's one of the things we were looking for um and uh i think we've also found uh you know a lot of information about um the kind of corporate avatar core backing of android indenture <laughs> so i think so how how this will work from our side is uh, when uh, the time is right, we can uh, ask uh, our friend Chester and uh, communicate with Bug uh, to to send over uh, everything they've got. Um, it'll be kind of a burst of data, uh, 
and it's fairly likely that that will that they're going to disconnect the network entirely uh, once that happens. Um, so right now, what we're doing is uh, basically getting what we want to be part of that data burst. Oh, um, we may have something that's a that will cause a major distraction. Oh, uh, away from those files. Okay. I look at Picubino. Well, but we also want this to be public, right? I oh mean, yeah, I know we do. But you said the minute that they see that you're trying to grab data, they're going to be shutting you down. But if they were preoccupied with something else, maybe that would give you more time to get the data that you need. Oh, okay. But then you should be prepared to also be broadcasting it through many, many, many venues. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Now, it's kind of funny because I'm not nearly as expert in the the ways of uh, the ways of media as all of you are. But um, our some of the, some of the triune devotees who wrote this up, they're very clever when it comes to um, computers. And so it, it will be hard to get rid of this once we have it. Um, Great. Well, uh, we. We can write we can write kind of worms that travel uh, the infosphere and um, are all but unkillable. Um, oh well, then maybe we should be coordinating because we have some things that also really do, are going to be aggressively squished if they're uh, once they're out. Oh well, yeah. Let's coordinate. What do you got? All right. Um, uh, Hecubino will set up a uh, like a small screen, and then be like, "All right, uh, slide one. He unsold it, right?" <laughs> um, and then basically slowly go through, try to organize chronologically everything that we found, along with like. Uh, you know the the corroborating information times where like deaths uh can be seen to you know obviously be uh written off but then have like data that is like well actually it's like this person supposedly uh died in a tragic shaving accident but in fact they were sucked into a demon vortex here's the here's the 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 concierge service uh camera to prove it and yep, just kind of go step by step, try to organize it um, so that it tells a story of, you know, of greed and betrayal. And don't forget nice. corruption and corruption. Yeah, this is this uh, is what I'm what I'm putting out there for the for the uh, cyborgs or for the uh, androids is definitely the first draft of the. Um of the narrative. Like I don't I don't want to make everything a presentation, but I want it to be presented in such a way that when you go from A to B to C to D, you can see like that there's a clear pathway. Uh so at first you have Zoe uh watching and then, you know, as you start going through in the presentation, a few of the uh nearby, you know, deckhands who were, you know, starting to uh, assess the squeaky clean for repairs they they kind of start hovering nearby and then at the end of uh Hecubino's presentation there's like two dozen people all like you know that they're sitting on the the floor of the um uh docker hanging hanger bay to uh so that they're not getting in uh the way so that everybody can see him um everybody like went in rapt attention nice I'm I'm definitely just like hanging on to a marker that that isn't actually connected to anything, but I'm counting on Quentin to go to the next slide every time I click on it. <laughs> <laughs> you totally possibly works. click it every time. Often, it totally often probably having him have to like rearrange the slide so that whatever I'm talking about actually is next. Next slide. Um, Clearly, the next slide will be this. And Quentin's like, <laughs> yeah. "Yep, okay." <laughs> 
So just an outside thing, you do know that like the TED Talk stuff, their clickers don't actually advance the slides. It actually just lights up a light to people who are on the slideshow. And they're the ones that actually change to the next slide. Perfect. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's the way to do it. Yep. Always have a Quentin. <laughs> that's great. Um, so uh, when you start wrapping up, uh, do you leave it kind of open ended? And it's like, so like, you know, are you looking for feedback or is it like, does it end on a certain note? Yeah, I'll definitely uh, lead into a Q&A and, nice. and thoughts. So it's like, it, it, it probably does end open-ended. Like, this is all that's happened up until now. And then uh, we'll say, like, we plan, we want to release this information close to the end of the next race. Um, and uh, And yeah, we need... We need a way to do it. We need sort of logistics um, help because obviously the six of us can't. Yeah, we're going to be kind of preoccupied. Get accomplished. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and then of course the the androids have uh, you know there's a fair bit of questions and Zoe will also point out it's like yeah and we have the evidence where she'll she'll kind of clicker through her way uh through what they believe they have on uh you know android indenture which is also kind of a, a major scandal of its own right um like it's kind of one of those things people are dimly aware of but it, you wouldn't be surprised if people thought that that was illegal and not happening um sure. and they say they have a an android friend <laughs> like experimenting um, on puppies right. Yeah. Uh so uh there's and plus you know there's a a bevy of other corporate crimes that you've got uh, a decent amount of evidence on. Um do you, do you show the uh the video? That's one question I have. Do you show the that that one special video? Um I'll I'll probably do a content warning. <laughs> beforehand and i'll probably stop it right as you know flesh is being yeah things get really bad yeah but you know i I have that you know kegubino has that theatrical sense (laughs) so it's like he'll he'll let the first squish noise happen before he stops it (laughs) um so yeah you get a lot of uh questions and feedback and um uh it's it's actually pretty helpful um you know the q and a goes for like an hour oh. um and, well i mean these are people who are uh a little bit more politically motivated than your mm-hmm. average joe um and but one thing is they find it um believable you know like uh, some some you you may have worried like oh is this just going to come across as a conspiracy theory to them they're like nope that sounds like the world we live in yeah okay yep yeah and it's probably going to resonate with a lot of other people too um because you don't like you don't get to be a galactic quadrillionaire without stepping on people and a lot and of people have been stepped people on those people are you know a lot of people have been stepped on and they're silent because they don't know about other people that have been stepped on but if you get them if you get them talking yep i dig it good work the you have the android abolitionist front uh you know i think assuming you guys are taking the the attitude of these guys are pretty trusted allies Mm -hmm. which that seems to be what you're doing uh they um are happy to they won't get into all of like the the exact details of how their stuff works, but mm-hmm. they can basically tell you that um, they have uh, kind of unsquishable uh, infosphere uh, worms. That again, it's not going to like take over the infosphere, but it can't be removed. It like right. self perpetuates. Um, 
So that's something that they can do to help. They also have, uh, you know, small uh, cells in various other sectors of the galaxy um, that can function as, you know, like rebroadcasters and like help lay groundwork on some of this stuff. Yeah. And I think we'll rely on them for the hard copies, like basically be like, okay, let's make, you know, a hundred hard copies and get this to the, to like the, the top 100. I hate Eon soldier <laughs> list. Yep. Wait, hang on. The top 100. I, I, I have some sort of leverage and I hate Eon soldier <laughs> list. Cause I'm sure lots of people super hate it yeah. and can't do anything about it. And we should also like get it to as many as our fans as we can. So, and with, especially with Quentin's priming, because they're the ones that'll be more likely to listen. Yeah. So um, another thing they can do is they can set up a really secure, basically uh, Infosphere server for oh, you, um, mm-hmm. where you can even like set up like timers and stuff like that, and you can you can spread the links as much as you want, but um, without without really extreme measures, this won't be taken down, and you know they they will say that they they've noticed. That um, actually, you know what? No, Quentin, you know that from previous uh, Drifters things and just other other campaigns, social campaigns you've seen, um, this wouldn't be unreasonable for you guys to set up if you were just trying to win this finale of Drifters. If you like had something timed right. where all of your fans did something super cool at the mm-hmm. same time during the race, like that's a legitimate Drifters strategy. Um, so having a secret website, that's, you know, that wouldn't even raise any flags for you guys to do. Yeah. Except this one will be like surprisingly difficult, like encrypted, hard to like hard to hack and hard to take down. Um, more than just a flash mob. Yeah. But it can give that flash mob, you know, a place to go. Yeah. And give them all worms. (laughs) Yeah, yep. unscrishable worms. Definitely, Hecubino is definitely looking forward to the part where he can stop talking about uh, horrible deeds, um, and and switch over to like, okay, what sort of graphics are we going to use to promote <laughs> this? Like, <laughs> definitely, definitely, something we need to have is like this thing where like you hold up the number four. And then you turn it, turn turn it down so your fingers are pointing down, and then you wiggle them, and that means four rain. Oh. Oh. Actually, yeah, that's a. I mean, that's both a a clever idea in its own right, and would also get. Uh, yeah, because as far as we know, as far as we know, you know, this is just like a vet, or as far as everybody knows, this is just a vet from the circuit that got. You know that that OD sure. was something happens, that happens, yep. and but we were his, you know, protege, her proteges. So there's no reason for us not to do mm-hmm. that, too, right? So yeah, makes perfect sense. Um, and yeah, we should also like get in, you know, talk with some of like the people we've dealt with who have pretty big followings, like like and subscribe, um, uh, to get that signal boosted. Oh, that's a good. We one. can like yeah. offer her some kind of like I exclusive preview. All right, well, I think we got something of a plan uh we should also get our chip as fixed up as possible and make sure it's like scanned as much as possible for any other booby traps that they're leaving stucking on it with you know secret missile launchers or i don't know missiles come here things yes uh zoe will coordinate with you on this bob but she has some thoughts which is basically there's probably only so many places they can put things uh you know, they're, they're, what are they going to do? They're going to maybe attach extra thrusters, attach extra weapons, those sorts of things. And she's thinking, what if we are one step ahead of them where we basically build in detachable armor plates on the squeaky clean such that when you actually start racing with the squeaky clean, you, you, uh, you have some sort of control uh, that you know, they don't know about that we give you that 
detaches those plates and maybe detaches whatever they've connected uh, to the ship. That's cool. Oh, I like that. Oh, yeah. Like to yeah, build some system good. redundancy mm-hmm. so that if they're like, oh, they they're up there, they've they've got their hands on the maser or whatever. <laughs> We can turn it like turn it off and then go through another uh-huh. channel to to turn it back on. That's sweet. And Bob, now you have a p- very good sense of the squeaky clean as well. Like after all the time you spent aboard and fixing every last <laughs> system in this, um, it is the, the squeaky clean is the the ship of Theseus at this <laughs> point. Mm. Uh, but you you think i mean you you can always be wrong you can always fail a check or whatever but you have a good kind of second sense for uh hey this isn't something isn't quite right um and uh once uh zoe notices that they they start uh intentionally kind of messing with you a little bit to see if you notice and it's kind of good training as well okay i'll catch him Ah, and i'll shake my finger each time Ah, you almost (laughs) got me there Good one. Yeah, they, they ran the reactor straight into the microwave. You guys always kidding around, but you know, <laughs> critics this is, burrito this is a big just deal exploded. for us. Please, please keep this in mind. It's our lives. That, that's the that's the only way the space outs become edible, though. Like, actually, <laughs> have some sort of like decent flavor. As you have to slight, at least slightly irradiate. <laughs> oh, yeah. They turn they... from that green color oh. to a nice golden. Yeah, they kind of yeah. they they pop like hot dogs. Oh yeah, they're, they're, like, they're slightly oh, yeah, melty. Actually... They're kind of chewy oh. and moist and melty, like yeah. like almost oh, like a yeah. cheese curd. Oh. Yeah, you, you could melt sell the them. Your mouth. You could sell them as food, but you'd have to like you'd have to use uh, the tagline "They scream when you cook them" because they literally go. Ah! Oh God, it's terrible, but it's cool. Technically, a food product. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> In no way not edible. At one point, Amu, you notice uh, that um, one of like the uh, the there's like a moving container crate um, uh, full of repair stuff that uh, has scuttled up Aww. next to you. Uh, we'll uh, we'll feed Herman a little bit. Ah, what does Herman eat other than you know pirates? No, we, we we kept we kept some pirate in the freezer <laughs> for him. Freezer <laughs> pirate. Herman is pretty omnivorous. Yeah, yep. crabs are. I mean, it's these like crab like. So crabs are scavengers. So I'm guessing him and Amu actually probably eat similar <laughs> things. <laughs> what, whatever random biomass Amu has on them at the time. <laughs> Sometimes Amu. Like, like a future how? equivalent of blue buffalo. It's like maybe that's how we got him in the crab. first place was by feeding I him. I forgot Amu. that that was true. Actually, you know the ship. The ship has these um, these vents that need to be cleaned, and you guys never bought. No one on the ship has ever cleaned yeah. them. Uh, it turns out Amu's been cleaning them and just feeding them all your dead skin <laughs> oh, scales God. Uh, too. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, nah, he's got a taste for humans. Uh, run. Uh, what do we care? <laughs> yeah, you guys, I, I'm the only one that has to run if he gets a taste yeah, for humans. Yeah, but he's humans. also got a taste for Vesk and possibly for Android oils. Yeah. He can have all the oil he wants. I'm reasonably certain he ate at least a couple of those when the menagerie <laughs> defended the ship during Quinn's yeah, if, 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 if we're worried about about uh, Herman getting a taste for something. We're way like, too late. This, the, we're way past it. Yeah, we should have killed him twenty episodes ago if we were worried. About it. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't away. expecting you to take the grape feed as a pet, but I don't here know we why are. You weren't. You apparently never ran a game for Rob yeah, before. <laughs> <laughs> why fight something when you can make friends with it? All right. It sounds like you guys have a plan. Uh, so. You will soon be uh, receiving a message uh, letting you know that before the race, you have uh, hours worth of pregame interviews, analysis, uh, commercials, commentary that you're obligated to perform. Of course we do. Sure. (sighs) Yep, we have to do our, like, our testimonials. Yeah, it's, we'll we'll roll out the heel stuff. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. 
Is someone and coaching Amu on that front? Just <laughs> repeat repeat after me, Amu. What you gonna do? What you gonna do? Brother. Brother. Sibling. Say it. All right. What you gonna do, sibling, <laughs> when the Amu train... When the Amu train... When the Amu train... When the Amu train... Uh, d- uh, subdivides on you. <laughs> The Yamu train subdivides on you? Just show off your collection of medical instruments and put that to use them on people. Ooh, yes. And describe them in great detail. Yeah, and what they do to a body. You know... uh, This is for piercing the eye. You know how you've been practicing making a a humanoid face? (sighs) To talk? Just do that. (laughs) Do exactly that. Say, Say... Wait, say exactly what you would normally say, but say it in this voice. We are happy to be here. We are happy to be here. We love humans. This is my friend who eats humans. <laughs> he's gonna scare I think he's gonna scare people more than we're heels. get them on our side. We're heels. This is for the uh the yeah. pregame stuff. Yeah. We're, we're, it's all right. We're I'm, doing a heel we'll face cover for you if you. Race, so. Fantastic. All right, and that <laughs> is where we will leave off for this time. All right. It sounds like uh, we know what's happening next time, and uh, man, I uh, can't wait to see this thing play out. See who lives. See who dies. Oh, it's going to be epic, ladies and gentlemen. Stick around. Let's uh, let's start seeing those those rain. Um, uh, hand signs flashing up all over the the socials you know what to do for rain everybody uh and uh also here's hoping all of your dice rolls are critical hits this podcast is copyright 2022 by major spoilers entertainment llc